Today we'll begin our unit on abstract art. First off, what is abstract art? Well really, abstract art is any art that is not realistic. In its true meaning, it means to take from, such as a summary of a piece of writing is sometimes called an abstract. It's because it's a smaller piece of writing that's taken from the original. In art, you can say the same thing from abstract. That, for example, an abstract art piece of the style of Picasso is taken from what he experiences in the natural world. But we're going to talk about different levels of that abstraction and kind of the history of abstract art over the last century and a half. Levels of abstraction. We're going to start with the Impressionists. The Impressionists really start to break free from the traditional painting that was very realistic in image and tried to paint reality and represent it on the canvas. The Impressionists, though, they kind of took it to a different level. You can see here that it does look like a realistic picture in some ways, but in, there, in some ways it's also not realistic. The use of paint strokes, the way color is used is not completely natural, yet somehow looks very interesting to our eye and comes together to create a somewhat natural looking image. But after the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist period, our work became a little bit more abstract. So here we have Woman Playing the Mandolin by Pablo Picasso, and here you can see it's much more abstracted meaning much less realistic. So if abstract is an art is defined as art that's not realistic, this is less realistic than the Van Gogh. It's now starting to be on a new level. You can still tell that there is a woman there and she's playing some sort of instrument, but it's definitely anything but realistic. And then as we move on a few years later, Picasso started painting around the turn of the 20th century, and then we start to get to Kandinsky. And in this, this is not really a picture of anything, right? There are shapes, there are lines, there are colors, but it doesn't really form anything. It might somewhat remind us of something, like often people see the a clock kind of in this image, but it's not definitely a clock, like the previous picture was definitely a woman playing a mandolin. It's kind of up to the mind's eye what you pull out of this image. And so in this way, it's abstracted to a whole new level. Now we're going to talk about an additional level. After World War II came a period of art known as Abstract Expressionism. In this form of abstraction, the idea of objects is completely gone. And we're mostly looking at just the paint as it's applied to the paper. And the paint is applied in a way that's not supposed to represent anything at all in reality, not even remind us of something that exists or objects. It's meant to express something within the artist. Take the artist's expression of color and form and line and texture and put it on canvas. And that's all it's supposed to be. And it's up to the viewer to interpret for themselves. So that puts abstract art into two primary categories. One is objective and the other is non-objective. The difference between objective and non-objective is that in the objective, such as in the Picasso on the left, you can see objects clearly. There is clearly a woman, there's clearly a mandolin, as unrealistic and abstract as it is in this cubist style. However, in John Hoyland's Lebanon, it's clearly no objects. There's nothing recognizable as something there unless you imagine it or you get it from within yourself. It's purely the act of applying paint to canvas or board in a way that expresses something from within the artist. So what we are going to do is we are going to be doing our own levels of abstraction. The first one we're going to be doing is create an objective abstraction based off of an image. So just like Picasso's cubist rendition of a woman playing a mandolin was objective in that you could see the mandolin and the woman in the picture, while heavily 
abstracted. Here I would like you to draw these famous pieces of art based off of the idea of objective abstraction. It doesn't have to be cubist, but it should be abstract in a way that you can still recognize the image. I want it to be abstracted to the point where you can still kind of tell what it is, even though it's very abstract. So I'm going to show you an example by using this image of the boating party by Marie Cassatt. All right, so here we're going to do an objective piece that's objectively abstracting this image here. So the idea here is we're not trying to draw this image exactly. We're trying to draw from an abstraction where you get the image from the image and it still kind of looks like the image, but it's really now a whole new work. Picasso is famous for doing this. I'm just going to look at this image and try to really find the major parts I really want to focus on. When I look at it, I really like the shape of this rower here, and then this big oar that's kind of sticking out to one side. That's, that's, those are some really nice shapes. So I'm going to start with the biggest one first, and that's this this rower. So I'm just going to kind of do it in more kind of this um, very angular type of thing, right? And so it might not be perfect, right? But and then I really want to get the idea of a face going on here. And down here, you know, he's, he's sitting and he's got his foot up here on the rail. So I'll put a little foot there. And then his other leg is kind of going underneath right, right this other rail. Okay. And he's holding onto this oar that's going way off to the side here. Now I really want to focus on making sure I get in these other two figures in here, the the woman and the and the baby. So baby's wearing this this hat, so I'm gonna make sure I get that in there. Nice round circle with the hat, and then there's this other hat. Hats are kind of a, important in this picture. I I've decided, so I'm gonna make this other hat right here. Okay, all right. So now for the baby, baby's kind of looking at this at this rower and so I'm just gonna kind of give the baby a face and make the eyes kind of maybe look like they're looking up at this guy right but it's not necessarily a happy face on that on that baby okay get some of these other shapes in there I'm not sure what that is but I've got this hand which I'm gonna put it right there and I've got some legs there's a, a foot, and there's a foot. I think I'm going to do this very Picasso style, where um, I've got this uh, nose, and lips, and mouth here. Where it almost looks like a profile of a face and the front end of a face at the same time. Um, she's got an ear going on here, and I can barely see some hair, so I'll put that in there like that. Alright, now I'm going to get that boat in there. I'm going to change that boat to kind of a straight line edge boat. I've got some buildings. I'm just going to put some kind of random squares in there. Alright. Uh, the boat continues over on the side. Right, maybe it really shows that over there. Now I could put something that indicates that this is water back here. Maybe like these little chevron-y kind of peaks right there. There we go. Now I've got an abstract picture of uh, Marie Cassatt's The Boating Party. This is objective, meaning that I can still see the what the primary image is. On my next picture, we're going to do one that's non-objective, where I'm going to take this Cassatt picture and I'm going to make it into one that's completely um, non-objective, somewhat based off of the original, yet 
Now it looks like a completely different painting. Next, we are going to create a non-objective interpretation of an image using the same images. Okay, so here I have this picture, and I'm going to turn this into an abstract drawing by looking at um, the different shapes I can find and just turning it into my own interpretation. So I'm looking at, like, I see this hat here. I'm going to kind of, kind of make it uh, like, like a little triangle shape there. And maybe I see this big part of his body, and I'm going to kind of turn that into a shape. And I've decided to use kind of angular lines there, um, but I don't have to. Um, I can also use um, very organic lines, like for this hat. Um, I might kind of do like this kind of a shape here. And um, actually that kind of looks like the original hat. Um, and then um, uh, I've got this here for the baby, right? And um, maybe um, I'll put her head there. Maybe I'll just show her head with just that line. And um, uh, I'm going to put these big oars in here as shapes, right? And um, oh, I guess I can only see one of the oars, but I can definitely see this part of the arm in here, and I'm going to put that in there as a shape, and then maybe put a little the curve of the boat in there, like that. And I've got this. A board here and I'm just gonna take that all the way across it doesn't go all the way across in the image but I'm gonna just take it all the way across okay and we've got this nice little sail going up here in the corner right this sail right there and um, I'm gonna um, add that as a shape I'm gonna let's just gonna let it come right into the picture just like that and let's see what else can I do here um, oh I've got up here at the top I've got this horizon line there so I'm just gonna add that I'm gonna put that right in here right across there and I'm gonna have it continue over here right through where her face was actually I'm gonna have it continue all the way right through that thing right there okay and I really want to try to capture things that I think are really important so like maybe the baby face is there I'm just going to put one eye there, so because I don't really want it to look like a baby face. It's still abstract. That baby foot I'm going to put there. Um, the other baby foot I'll put down there. This is an interesting shape here. This big cummerbund of this this rowers it has right there. I'm actually going to draw that over here. Maybe it's got. It doesn't have to be in the same place, and maybe it has some of these wrinkles on it. And. Um, uh, I like how this curve and this curve are interacting with each other. So I'm going to try to put that curve in there so that it interacts with this curve. So we've got this double curve here going on. And actually, I'm going to add in a couple of curves because I see that curve is repeated with that line and that line and that line and that line. So I'm just going to have that curve repeat a couple times just to kind of give that kind of idea. Even maybe even more times than it does in the real picture. The hand for the baby. Okay, that's a pretty interesting shape. I'm gonna move that down here. I just, just feels a little empty, and I'm gonna make it nice and big. Very abstract version of it. Okay, and um, that's it. So here it is, um, my interpretation of uh, Marie Cassatt's The Boating Party. One other thing I can do is um, I do not have to view it in the same uh, direction. I can turn it inside. You know what? I think this this picture should look this direction. Okay, or maybe upside down. No. no. Actually, I think I like it this way. I really like how that this curve is kind of rising up over here. And uh, then we've got these two things kind of lining up at the bottom, kind of anchoring the whole thing. So I'm going to have mine be here. So I'm going to give mine a new title and I'm going to put it down here at the bottom of what mine should be and I'm going to call this um, row. That's my title for it. Alright, uh, go ahead and try this on your own and good luck.
The next form of abstract art is a form of non-objective abstract art. As I said, it started to take hold after World War II in the late 40s, early 50s, and especially in one artist named Jackson Pollock. Abstract expressionism is the idea of painting without any reference at all except for expressing your own inner self putting that onto the canvas and letting the paint flow from the artist and it doesn't have to look like anything except paint. So here we see abstract art almost in its purest form and its most abstract. The idea of using drips of paint as lines to not only see the brush strokes but let the paint act as paint acts and drip as paint drips, and be the paint itself be a form of expression, is what Jackson Pollock did with his work. One of the abstract artists, Franz Klein, said, I paint not what I see, but the feelings they arouse in me. Meaning, he could paint something like interpreting a piece of music and listen to a piece of music, but if he paints, he doesn't paint the music that he hears or the interpretation of the image that he sees. He merely paints the feelings of those things that are aroused in him. What I would like you to do is listen to several pieces of music and as you listen to them, draw, paint, totally non-objective abstractions based off not abstractions of the music, but abstractions of how the music makes you feel. Now we're going to talk about looking at abstract art. We've talked about how abstract art, a lot of it is about the viewer having their own experience. It's not as much about trying to figure out what the artist is trying to say as a part as as much as it is about the viewer being a part of the art and drawing their own conclusions out of the art. And in that way we like to say that looking at abstract art is kind of like finding images in clouds. Clouds have no meaning generated by an artist, but we can pull meaning from them by how we see them. For example, in this image, some may see a bird or a duck. In this image, some may see the face of a man. Some may see the crashing waves of an ocean. Some may see an elephant while others may see a heart. So just like finding images in clouds, understanding abstract art is really in the eye and spirit of the holder. And that's you. So it's really important to keep an open mind when you're looking at art. Take the art for what it is, be ready to, to react to it in your own way, and just know that your reaction is your own and is not correct or incorrect, but it is. Most people say that no matter what mood you're in, you can look at a piece of abstract art and still be able to relate to it in some way. Everyone brings their own unique interpretation to abstract art, and it's really up to the individual viewer to find something from within. So we're going to use a method to take an active part in creating meaning in a work of art. The, meaning, the method's going to work somewhat like this. First, you're going to sit back, close your eyes, and relax. Then slowly open them and just stare at the artwork. Don't think, just stare. Stay in the present moment. Then you're going to ask yourself, what do you feel? Is it sad, angry, excited, etc.? Then ask yourself, what does this work make you, why does this work make you feel this way? Is it because of the colors, the lines, the space, the texture? Now, look at it more closely. Can you put a concept or story or meaning in that is personal to you in this work? The relating to the elements of the art within your own life? How can you relate to this piece of work? So we're going to look at the image that we saw at the very beginning of this slideshow, and we're going to do this process. So with, with me, start by closing your eyes, relaxing, trying to empty your mind of any preconceived notions of what you might see. Then slowly open them 
and stare at the artwork. Don't think, just stare and be in the moment. Ask yourself, what do you feel? Angry, sad, confused? Ask yourself, why does it make you feel this way? Is it the lines, the color, the texture, the space? Share your thoughts with the people in your group. Now look at it more closely. Can you put a concept, story, or meaning that's personal to you in this work through relating the elements of the art with your own life? Maybe you see something in it that reminds you of something that happened to you. Maybe you see something familiar, like pulling an image out of a cloud. Abstract art is all about what the artist feels and what mood they might want to portray. And as a viewer, it's up to you to draw your own meaning, combining your own experiences with what you see in front of you. So whether you're looking at an objective piece of abstract art, like this Picasso, does this image remind you of anything from your own life? How do the colors make you feel? Or this image, very different, also a piece of objective abstract art. You can see objects, or in this case, human faces, within the art. Maybe there is something that reminds you of something that you've recognized before. What is it? Or maybe it's a piece of non-objective abstract art, such as Franz Klein's painting number two. How does the lack of color here impact your relationship to the painting? Does it remind you of anything? Or Jackson Pollock's Convergence? What do the colors in this say to you? So in summary, you'll say that abstract art is any art that's not realistic. It can be objective or non-objective. Where objective art has recognizable images or objects. Non-objective art uses only line, shape, form, and color, and has no recognizable images, no objects. Abstract Expressionism is a non-objective abstract art where the artist expresses purely their own inner feelings and emotions. And abstract art requires the viewer to draw their own meaning, using their own experiences to guide them. Now we will create our own piece of art. We're actually going to create three pieces of art. I want you to try each style. I want you to use tempera paint on paper. Create your own abstract. You can do one each of objective, non-objective, or expressionist art. You'll end up having three pictures at the end of this assignment. In each, you'll express your own feeling or mood with line, shape, color, and texture. Then on the back of one of them, I want you to write what your work, what is it that your work is trying to express. Pick the one that you think expresses yourself the most. So good luck and try to think abstractly.